guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karthik and this is session 3 on the topic of Hadoop Administration and Operations. Now in the previous session, we discussed the various differences between traditional database systems and Hadoop. Well, in this session, we will be digging deeper into the Hadoop storage layer which is the HDFS. Now the Hadoop framework is an extremely modular design, which means each of its components can to some extent function independently. The HDFS or the Hadoop Distributed File System is the storage component of the Hadoop framework. It was a child born out of the GFS or the Google file system, which was also one of the first implementations of a distributed storage. Now this session will be covered in four sections. First, we'll discuss about the basics of what a file system is and hence understand why HDFS is named that way. Second, we'll discuss briefly about data blocks and then we'll talk about how data is stored on HDFS. In the last section, I'll be performing a lab demo on a single node Apache Hadoop system to show you guys how you can interact with HDFS from command line and perform some basic file system operations. Now, unless you have never worked on a computer before, you must have surely interacted with the file system in one or the other way, even if you don't know it. A file system is an integral part of any operating system. It is a mechanism by which the OS stores, retrieves and keeps track of all the files on its disk or partition. Now this is just grossly understating the actual scope of activities that a file system does. The data on a disk has no meaning and is just a sequence of zeros and ones without a file system that gives it a structure and makes it accessible to us. Now the file system is responsible for managing all logical and physical aspects of storing a file. It stores the directory structure and the file metadata information like owner, permission, modification date, creation date, etc. It also stores the blocks associated to a file and their physical location on the disk. It is also responsible to keep track of free space and the location of free blocks on a disk. Now there are hundreds of file systems available for different OS types, each having their own characteristics or features. However, going into the detail of each one of them would be out of scope for the scopes. Some examples of Linux-based file systems would be ext2, ext3, ext4, xfs, riserfs, etc. Some of the Windows-based file systems are fat or the file allocation table, ntfs, xfat and refs or the resilient file system. Now there are other types of file system like nfs which is a network-based file system. Now the Hadoop storage layer or the hdfs works just like a file system. It was designed to do most if not all of the tasks of an OS file system. Now remember, the HDFS is an abstracted interface provided to users that shields its internal components. Internally, HDFS is made up of several interdependent components. However, the user just gets to see the abstracted interface which feels just like interacting with any other file system. You can store files, create directories, list out directory structures, change owners and permissions, etc. Just like any other file system and hence the name Hadoop Distributed File System. Now even though HDF is similar to an OS file system, there are some important differences that you should understand first. Now unlike an OS file system, HDFS does not run as a kernel component but instead runs as a user program in the user space. Now I suppose you have the basic understanding of an OS architecture then you should know that the kernel is the heart of an operating system. And any program running in the kernel space has the highest level of privilege in the system, which we also call as ring zero, as you can see in this diagram. Now, this gives kernel space programs direct and full access to the system hardware, which is where the OS file systems work. Now, on a side note, you might want to know why HDFS was designed as a user space application instead of a kernel space code which would have no doubt provided it with potential performance improvements. Well, in order to answer this question, you have to understand that getting a piece of code into the Linux kernel is not an easy job. It is usually a long, complicated and odious task. A kernel code cannot just be added to address a specific group of people or requirements, but must include the general Linux market, keeping in mind the overall stability, compatibility and security of the kernel. Hence, the Hadoop developers found it more practical to develop a user space file system application which will in turn work on top of a kernel space file system. This provides them with some distinct advantages allowing faster development of the code and provides the flexibility to flaunt the complex POSIX requirement and the rigorous testing 
required for a kernel code. Now the second important difference is that HDFS is an append only file system, which means you can only append to files on HDFS. You cannot delete or modify data once it has been entered to a HDFS file. Now, in order to modify a file on HDFS, you might have to rewrite the whole file again with the modification and then delete the older one. Well, I know this sounds extremely inefficient. However, HDFS is built around the idea that big data applications do not need to modify data much once it has been entered. Now, HDFS, just like any other file system, stores data in the form of blocks. A data block is the fundamental unit of any storage system. In general sense, a data block in any storage system can be defined as the smallest chunk of data that the system is capable of handling as one single unit. Be it your hard disk controller, your OS file system or the HDFS, each of them have their own definition of data block. So let's discuss them one by one. For a hard disk controller, the smallest referenceable unit of data is its sector. As you can see in this diagram, it is also a subdivision of track in spherical disks. Traditionally, it has been 512 bytes for spherical disks, which means a hard disk controller can only store or retrieve data in chunks of 512 bytes. However, newer hard disks called advanced formats or AF come with 4 KB as their sector size. Now for a hard disk controller, a block of data is the sector of the disk where the actual data is stored. However, this is different from an OS file system data block. While a sector specifically refers to a physical location on disk, an OS file system brings about a layer of software abstraction on the physical blocks. Hence, for a file system, a data block has a more logical meaning than physical. Now, a file system data block is basically the smallest unit of logical disk space that can be allocated to a file and is assigned a unique block address. Now, a file system block size may or may not be equal to the disk sector size. Typically, a file system block size is a multiple of disk sectors. Now, the file system is responsible for mapping multiple disk sectors to each of its data blocks. All the sectors mapped to one file system data block would always have to be in a contiguous group, also called as cluster of sectors. The default block size of most modern file systems is 4KB. However, it can be changed while you're creating the file system. So one 4KB file system block would now be mapped to eight contiguous 512 by sectors, as you can see in this diagram I've made. Now the file system block size can have some interesting effects on the overall performance of your storage stack. So let's discuss that a little bit. We have always heard that hard disks are the slowest storage devices, and it is true. Hard disk performance is one of the biggest bottleneck that cap limit of high performance systems. This is due to the fact that your hard disk is also one of the only component in your system that has actual moving mechanical parts. Of course, apart from your system fan. Now, one of the biggest culprits of hard disk lag is something called as seek time. It is the time taken by the hard disk controller to first locate the area on the disk where the data to be read is stored and then for the head assembly to actually travel to the area where it is located. Hence, reducing the number of seek is key to improving data read performance on disks. Now, whenever you store a file on your OS, the file system first breaks it into blocks, which is then written to the disk sectors. For a fully empty disk, these blocks are stored in continuous sectors. In this case, only one seek will be enough to read the whole file. However, this is not always the case. As time passes and you add delete file after file, the file system can no longer find long continuous sectors and will try to accommodate data blocks wherever it finds a free space. This is also called file system data fragmentation. Now since data blocks are no longer contiguous, multiple seeks needs to be initiated to read a single file which will reduce disk performance. Now this is where the file system block size plays an important role. Now, since one file system block will always be stored as contiguous disk sectors and cannot be fragmented, increasing the block size will increase the amount of data that can be read in one seek operation. Also, larger block size means lesser blocks for each file. This improves disk performance, especially for reading huge amounts of data. 
Now before you start making an opinion that large block size means better performance, you should know that there are limitations to this theory. The limitations arise from the fact that for a file system, a data block is like a quantum particle of disk space. It is the smallest storage space that can be allocated to a file. Hence, even if the file size is less than the block size, the file system would still allocate the whole block to that file. Here is an example where I have created a test file. Now if you see the size of the file, you can see that it is 6 bytes. However, when you see the size on disk, it still shows as 4 KB, which means the file system has allocated the whole 4 KB block to just store 6 bytes of data. Now this brings about some amount of inefficiency in the disk space allocation, since file sizes won't always necessarily be multiples of block size. Hence, there will almost always be wasted space in the last block, which is called as slack space. This becomes more and more evident as you increase the block size. Now you must almost never change the default block size of your file system unless for specific applications or requirements. Also, you should know what you are doing. Now choosing a block size depends on the type of files you will be storing on your system. Smaller block sizes are advisable for systems that store large number of small files. A large block size is more appropriate for systems which store smaller number of very large files. Till now we have discussed file systems, disk sectors and data blocks. Now it's time to add the next layer of abstraction which is the HDFS. As discussed earlier, HDFS provides an abstracted software interface to clients who are then shielded from all its internal components and mechanisms. Now a file on HDFS just like any other file system is first broken into blocks. Now these HDFS blocks are then distributed across various nodes where they will be stored as regular files on the OS file system. Now Hadoop is a system specifically designed to store smaller number of very large files. Hence HDFS block size can be exceptionally large. The block sizes in HDFS can be anywhere from 64 MB to as high as 2 GB and is configurable. Now remember that each HDFS block is stored as one single file on the local file system. This along with the fact that you cannot modify or delete data that has been entered through HDFS to some extent make sure that a single HDFS data file is always written as contiguous block on the disk by the OS. This reduces fragmentation of HDFS data. Also the large block size reduces cost of C as large amounts of data can be read in one sweep. This increases the overall performance of your storage stack. Now it is important to understand that HDFS blocks are treated just like any other regular file by the underlying file system, which is under no obligation to store them in continuous sectors unlike its own blocks. Hence, it is advisable to allocate separate partitions or disks to store HDFS data and not share it with OS or other application data that might lead to fragmentation. Now apart from reducing seek time, the actual significance of large block sizes comes from the fact that it reduces overall memory overhead. Now this will make more sense to you in the next session when I'll cover name node. However, for now just know that HDFS is an in-memory file system which means it stores all of its namespace and block address information in the random access memory. Hence, larger the block size, lesser would be the number of blocks, which means lesser would be the entries in the block address table. This helps in efficient memory utilization on systems like Hadoop. Now there is one important thing to note. Unlike OS file systems, HDFS does not suffer from slack space. This is because HDFS does not allocate the whole block size even if the size of your data is less. So for example, if you have set the HDFS block size as 64 MB and want to store a 10 MB file, the HDFS block for that file would be stored just as a 10 MB file on the underlying file system. HDFS will then recalculate the free space from the available space on the local file systems. Hence, no space is wasted due to the large block size of HDFS. Again, as with every other good thing, of course, there are limitations on how large a HDFS block can be. Interestingly, the limitation does not come from the storage layer, but from the processing layer.
Now, HDFS is a distributed file system, which means it distributes its data blocks across various nodes. This is extremely important for the processing layer, which cannot parallelly process these blocks across multiple nodes. However, larger the block size is, lesser would be the number of blocks, which would tend to reduce the data distribution among these nodes. This can have an impact on the parallel processing of data. Hence, Choosing HDFS block size should be a bargain to achieve the right level of data distribution that you want for your Hadoop cluster. Let us now perform a few lab practicals to understand what we just learned. 